I'll be off at summer camp for a while. So for some uh, people who hate my teaching on dispensational salvations, I'm giving you so much advantage <laughs> to prepare your arguments. In the meantime, today I'll just be doing Q&A. Q&A. All right, and then when I return, you know, then the, uh, as the Lord guides me, I'll continue my teaching on dispensational salvations. Okay, uh, first question. Do we have question number one? All right, Jenny. All right, finally. You know, finally. I always ignore you for some weird reason. All right, what's your question? Yeah, I do have a question based on the lessons of the Lordship salvation. If mm. you say a mm. believer... Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does that pertain to his salvation? Yeah, okay, that's a good question. Okay, so let's go to 2 Corinthians, please. 2 Corinthians, and we'll look at chapter, <coughs> chapter 7. Look at 2 Corinthians. <coughs> chapter 7. Okay, so... Now, the question is this. The question is concerning lordship salvation. So what is lordship salvation? So a lot of you have heard me talk about this quite numerous times. So lordship salvation basically is that if you don't surrender all to Jesus Christ, if he's not the Lord of your life, then you are not saved. So obviously there are some things in your life that you didn't surrender everything to the Lord. Otherwise, um, we would have gotten saved probably multiple times by now, right? <laughs> Especially when during preaching you hear something that you never thought of before was wrong, now you know is wrong, right? So then those things you didn't know that you had to surrender. So surrendering to his lordship, that's the idea. Now this is a noble thing, of course, don't get me wrong. Obviously, you got to realize this, the wrong doctrines out there, there's going to they're going to have an element of truth, an element of something nice to it. So did the devil when he tempted Eve. It's that, uh, you know, this fruit, it looks good to eat. See, it's something nice. There's always going to be an element of something nice. So there's nothing wrong with surrendering to God's lordship. But the problem is this. The problem is, is that when you're thinking about this idea where there's so many sins in your list, Whenever you do soul winning, this is not soul winning. It's not soul winning when you go through every sin in the list. Are you willing to surrender this? Are you willing to surrender this? Are you willing to surrender this? And if you find something in there they didn't surrender, and they're not willing to surrender, and then you say that uh, they're lost. That's not the idea. So that's why we don't believe in this notion where you have to go through the sins in your list. But then Lordship Salvation, they'll probably argue that we're not saying every single sin. Some of them are starting to say that now. They'll still say repent of all your sins, but they're starting to, uh, but they, what they mean by that now is not every single, we're not being nitpicking on every single sin. Okay, then here's the key where you catch them is that there's a significant change. That's where, that's what they believe. What they believe is if there is no significant change in your life, then you're not saved. But the problem with this teaching is up to what point then can we judge them that they're really changed, so to speak. We can't tell. No one can tell. No one can tell except God. We can look at their outward actions and see how much they change outwardly, but what about the inward sins? That's another issue right there. So we can't judge on how much that they're changed, that it's up to this level you're saved, up to this level, then you're not saved. No, then you're setting up a standard and a lever a level like a Pharisee, unless you're like me, then you're really saved. That's why Paul Washer, he keeps scaring people about their salvation. Because he sounds like a pious individual, close to God, talking about surrendering to his lordship and then all that kind of stuff, and it scares people. But then what about the people, which Sister Jenny is talking about right here, is that let's say the person... Uh, he does not surrender to his lordship when he gets saved. And let's put the worst possibility here. Let's say that he becomes wicked like some kind of demon-possessed person. Is he still saved after that? There are two explanations for this. First of all, we are not. I want to make this very clear so that people don't get upset with us and think that we're, uh, we're licensing everybody 
to sin and just believe on Jesus Christ. And if there's a pedophile or a murderer out there, I just believe on Jesus and I can go out and do something like that. No, we don't condone that at all. We believe that there has to be, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. So we believe in that. We believe there has to be conviction over sin. But notice the next part here. Uh, to salvation what? Not to be repented of. So in other words, this is not repeated again then. So this repentance is not continual. It's not uh, repetitive for salvation. That's something you got to understand right there. Up to what level? Well, in verse 11, here's the idea. For behold this, this self same thing, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort. What carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. <clears throat> in all these, in all things, ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. So the problem with this teaching concerning repentance is that if you look at verse 11, is that how much did you really repent, right? Well, then verse 10 set, showed you already you don't have to repent again. One. So that means it must be something simple then. Number two, if you look at verse 11, it gave you different levels. It doesn't matter. Uh, sorrowed after a godly sort, verse 11. Or you're more careful this time. Uh, the next part, you're, you're even clearing yourself. One, there's frustration. Another thing is you feel fearful. Uh, another thing is desire or zeal or revenge. See, when people have a conviction over sin, it's all in different levels right here. It's all on different levels. The point is just conviction. You might have a desire to do what is right. You may have a desire to not sin. I mean, that's a pretty easy question that I ask people. Obviously, you don't want to sin, right? And they're like, no, I don't want to sin. There are other people who might say that they do. So then right there, then you can catch them right there if they had that uh, first step concerning about their sinful condition. But the idea is this, is that it also points out in verse 9, where it talks about you were made sorry but that he sorrowed to repentance. So the idea is this, it can go to the level of being sorry. What if a person surrendered to his lordship? That's fine too. It doesn't matter. My dad, when he got saved, you know what he did after he got saved? He wasn't, he wasn't like going up and down with his alcohol. He threw his alcohol down the drain. He, he went all the way. I mean, if you want lordship salvation, there, would, there it was right there, like totally surrender. We're gonna make this a Christian home. Because my dad's mentality is you're in or out. That's his character. And then if you're not in or out, I mean, that's why you heard him preaching. Simple, isn't it? It's simple, right? Just be in or out, you know, like that. I don't get it why it's so tough. Yeah. So that's my dad, though. So it doesn't matter. See, whether a person surrenders everything or not, it doesn't matter about that. The Lord considers, the point is, the point is, it doesn't matter what level. Did you have conviction over your sin? And the idea is this, repentance to what? Salvation. Here's the problem that I have with these Lordship Salvation people. Because they harp so much on sin, which is right, what do they do? It doesn't lead the people to salvation. What they want to do is let the Holy Spirit keep convicting them, let them go home like Ray Comfort does. After he goes through the Ten Commandments and then he tells them to read the Bible, you know, go home and do this kind of stuff then what is he teaching them right there? He's not teaching them right there that now you got to put your trust in Christ right then and there. See, repentance should lead you to belief. Repentance should lead you to believe on Christ for salvation. Look, when you have, when you have conviction over your sin, what are you going to do with all of it? That's where you catch lordship salvation. It's like, what are you going to do with all this sin now? And they're like thinking, surrender it on the altar. Get that cleaned up. Get that? See, that's the problem. Or you'll hear them keep saying, stop sinning. So that's the idea. That's wrong then. Anything of yourself is a work. What you got to do with all this conviction over sin is now you got to believe on Christ. You got to say, I can't do anything with my sin, God. I can't do anything about it. All I can do is lay it at your feet at the cross. That's why I'm relying on your cross, believing on your cross Amen. to save me. See, that's why repentance and belief goes hand in hand. It leads you more to belief in Jesus Christ. That's the idea. Look at Jonah. Look at the book of Jonah. The idea about 
turning from evil is not a sin. I mean, excuse me. Turning from sin, turning from evil is not a work. That's totally wrong because look at Jonah chapter 3 and verse 10. Jonah chapter 3 verse 10. When you're turning from your evil, doing something yourself. And isn't that Ephesians 2, 8 through 9? Not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. See, when you're doing something yourself, that's a work. Look at Jonah 3, 10. And God saw their what? Works. What is work? that they turn from their evil way. Look at that. See? So that's considered works for salvation. That's why we get on Ray Comfort, John MacArthur, Paul Washer, John Piper, Jeff Durbin, James White, and did I miss any of your Calvinist heroes? So we, excluding Ray Comfort, if some of you want to get technical, I know he's not Calvinist, but he's befriending a lot of them and giving the same gospel. Aside from all this, this is why we get on them. Because they are perverting the gospel, Amen. which is saving your soul from hell. Amen. A lot of people live in fear. I had some people talking to me in this church about wondering about their genuine salvation right here. Did they really repent? Did they really get saved? Stuff like that. Why? Because Paul Washer scares them of their salvation. He talked about this one person who supposedly got converted because he let that person go home, read the Bible, go through it over and over and over and over again, this one particular passage, and then I guess some experience shone a light on her and just clicked on her and that's when she got saved. Then that problem is, is that you're relying on an experience to save you rather than trusting in the blood of Christ for salvation. And that can be charismatic too. And that's a dangerous element within Korean churches, I notice. Korean churches, when you combine the experience feeling with charismatic teachings, with Korean Presbyterians who believe in Calvinism, it's a dangerous mixture. 